On today's episode, what is a hypersonic missile? Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. Rocket propelled guided missiles, well, they've been around for 80 years, and although the technology has advanced greatly, all share two things in common a sophisticated guidance system and very high speed. Now, guidance was the critical enabling technology starting with the original military guided missiles, the German V 1 and V 2. Both were deployed against England in the latter half of World War II and they inflicted over 30,000 civilian casualties. The V-1 was a drone aircraft, but the V-2 was a true ballistic missile, rocket-powered and flying to the edge of space. With a peak velocity of approximately five times the speed of sound, the V-2, unlike the jet-powered V-1, could not be intercepted and the missile attacks only stopped when the launching sites were overrun. The need for speed was well understood after World War II, as multiple nations developed rocket-powered missiles from portable, subsonic, shoulder-mounted weapons to ground and submarine-launched intercontinental ballistic missiles. In between these systems are air-launched standoff missiles, used tactically to deliver payloads with minimal risk to the delivery aircraft. Now here again, speed is essential to prevent interception, and Mach 5 speed, the definition of hypersonic, makes a missile very difficult to track and target. The US, China, and Russia have active hypersonic missile programs, but only one system has been used in combat, the Russian Kinzhal weapon, which has been fired on Ukrainian targets since mid-March. Both the US and China have active development programs for hypersonic air-launched missiles like Kinzhal with one critical difference. Kinzhal is rocket-powered. US and Chinese hypersonic development programs focus on a type of propulsion called scramjet, a portmanteau meaning supersonic combustion ramjet. Ramjets, as the name implies, use fast-flowing air entering a jet engine without mechanical compression to support a simple, straight-through combustion cycle. They're extremely simple and cheap to build, but suffer from some severe design constraints. The primary one is that they only operate efficiently at supersonic speeds where shock waves can be managed to produce the necessary compression for efficient operation. At hypersonic operating speeds, however, airframe heating is a major problem due to the friction of even rarefied high-altitude air. Performance limitations based on airframe heat are nothing new in high-performance aircraft, but at hypersonic velocities, heat-resistant materials not unlike those used for space re-entry vehicles are needed, and even then, scramjet test missiles have engine lifetimes measured in seconds or minutes. Purely rocket-powered hypersonics are much simpler to engineer. With no intake, ceramic composites or ablative coatings on the nose cone can cope with the heat for the few minutes of flight time. So why use scramjets? Well, the primary reason is range. Rockets must carry their own oxidizer, and for aircraft-delivered missiles, the fuel is usually solid. Scramjets gather their oxidizer from the air, meaning a greater proportion of airframe weight can be devoted to fuel, greatly increasing the potential range of the weapon. This standoff range is critical for the survivability of the carrier aircraft, and a recent test of a Lockheed Martin hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept missile was successfully flown over ranges widely reported as 300 miles. Now, any range over the radar horizon makes ground-based surface-to-air missile attack on the launching aircraft very difficult, and the speed of the missile itself makes it almost impossible to intercept with current technology. Of course, for every measure, there is a countermeasure, and just as American efforts led by DARPA are producing workable scramjet-powered missiles, that agency is also developing a hypersonic missile interceptor program called Glidebreaker to counter the threat. On October 16th, the Financial Times quoted unnamed sources as stating that the Chinese had test-fired a nuclear-capable hypersonic missile using an orbital rocket booster. This application of hypersonic technology could replace conventional ICBMs with weapons that are both fast and highly maneuverable, making them very difficult to intercept, even from suborbital altitudes. So at this point of development, hypersonics appear to be bifurcating into two primary classes of missile. Aircraft-launched tactical weapons, which will use scramjet engines to give the carrier aircraft safe standoff capability, and long-range surface-to-surface missiles that are nuclear-capable and just as difficult to intercept. Although hypersonic by the strict definition of the word, the Russian Kinzhal is not the technological leap forward that scramjets represent, but it does mean that defensive systems may need Star Wars-type technology to cope with the threat, specifically directed energy weapons. Mach 5 is fast, but photons move at 186,000 miles per second. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by Engineering.com. 
For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.